question from Chris McCoskey of the Detroit News. Hello, Al. Thanks, thanks for this. Appreciate the time. Oh, I thought I was going to be able to see you guys. Oh, I'm, I'm here. I'm talking about on the screen. I don't know why I don't see you on the screen. Okay. Well, um, you, you've had you've had a nice little flurry here with position players the last 14 days or so. I'm wondering though, just right off the top, if I mean, are you still looking? I know you're always going to be looking, but are you still hoping to maybe add another veteran starter to the mix here before uh, you know before it gets into the regular season? Yes, uh, we're definitely looking for more pitching as we speak. Okay. Uh, whether it be a major league contract or a minor league with an NRI, I'm not really sure, but uh, we're definitely looking for more pitching. Starting pitching specifically, though? Uh, well, yeah. I mean, uh, pitching in general, but starting pitch, I think at least one more starter would be ideal. Okay. Can, can you just, uh, what is your assessment of, of, of all that you have done this offseason? Um, did, did you meet your targets, most of them, or did you exceed them? I mean, how, how, do, you, how do you assess what, what you've done this offseason so far? Well, uh, that's a good question. And I do like the idea uh, of the, I mean, I do like the players that we've added. Uh, we feel that um, we really got good value on Robbie Grossman. Uh, as we just had a meeting today, a staff meeting today, and we were going through some of these players and um, I'm pretty so happy about bringing a guy like that, kind of changing the, the mindset of, of the, of the team, you know, as we move forward and, and how to take your at bats, um, you know, with a, uh, you know, with a, with a more high walk rate on base percentage, his power is coming, uh, you know, a really a pro at it. And so uh, we thought that was a great acquisition. Um, and then of course, Jonathan Scope, you know, being, being our best offensive player last year and playing good defense. Um, Wilson Ramos uh, will, will add uh, uh, offense to, to our air uh, behind the plate. And, and we know he, he can catch uh, better than what the numbers show. Uh, and he's determined to do so. And he also be a good mentor for our young guys. Um, actually, they all will. I mean, Grossman, Scope and, 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 and Ramos will be a, a good mentors for our young players as we move forward. And, uh, you know, and then when we got Mazzara, we felt we were, you know, we, we were, we were talking to him um, the whole time uh, as well as some other guys. And, um, we we're fortunate enough to, 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 you know, pick him up here at the end. Um, you know, at, at his age, he still has upside. Uh, we, we, we feel we can make some adjustments to his hitting. And, um, and, and you never know. I, I think there's some, uh, some uh, potential there for, for, for a comeback and, and, and more upside to reach his full potential. So we're, we were happy about that. And, and obviously, we want more competition for our young players. You know, um, at this point, uh, we're looking to win more games. We're looking for players to make the club through good performance and competition. So uh, that was part of also bringing in some of the more veteran guys to, to make the team better, more competition, some leadership uh, on the team. And so uh, that's the way we looked at it. With Arena, the same thing. We had uh, people that knew him uh, from the Marlins and they – they said he'll, you know, he's probably going to be one of the hardest workers, if not the hardest worker uh, on the staff, and that um, he brings it. He brings a, you know, a professional uh, approach to, to every day, and um, it'll be a, a, a interesting to see how he can bounce back. And with him, you know, we feel obviously, and he wants to be a starter, and we were hoping that that he can give us some starting innings. Uh, but also, he, you know, he's got experience in the bullpen. He's even closed games. Um, so he's got really good stuff. It's still there. Um, and so we feel we, we should get some, uh, some good production out of, out of him. So, you know, that mix of guys with the young guys that we have coming back, uh, you know, Paredes is going to be given an opportunity in spring training, uh, even though, you know, he's still young and, and might, and probably can still use some Marley time, but, uh, but, you know, he's pushed the envelope in that, you know, he's performed well in particular this winter. Uh, so he's going to get an opportunity. Willie Castro uh, is going to get an opportunity in the infield. Um, you know, so Ken Lario, we're hoping that he continues to, to you know, the, the good progress that he's made. Um, and then, you know, we're hoping that Nico Goodrum uh, can bounce back and, and give us some, some more offensive production. We, we know that he can play defense and we know he can play multiple positions. So um, 
our hope is that he can uh, that he improves the uh, offensive side of the game. And if he does that, then uh, we have a really good player. So Jacoby Jones in center field uh, coming back from the injury. Um, you know, hopefully he, he continues to where he left off and, you know, he was, seemed to be having better at bats and, and um, those are the areas that we look for him to continue to improve. So, uh, you know, the team in general, I think the lineup uh, is, you know, improved from last year. Um, the pitching, obviously, you know, we do have a concern that we, you know, to, to get, get through the whole entire season, we, uh, in our meeting today, we did discuss a six man rotation. And, um, and, and then really uh, uh, getting through the season and, and, and having, you know, relievers uh, mixed in, um, you know, you, you might see more players being brought up and, and option throughout the season as you need fresh arms, um, you know, from week to week. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how uh, AJ and, and, and Chris Vetters, uh you know, manages the, uh, not only the, you know, the, the bullpen, but the entire staff. So, but, um, uh, you know, there's going to be some good opportunity there, too, for guys like uh, Casey Mize and, uh, and Tarek Skubal. Um, You know, uh, AJ and, and, and Chris Vetters are, are toying with the idea of Norris and, and Alexander maybe, you know, um, starting more games if necessary. Uh, I know Norris would like to be a starter again and, and, um, and as uh, Alexander. So those guys are going to have real opportunities. Um, you know, we want to make sure that Turnbull continues to, uh, to improve in uh, his game and, and, and continue to reach his full potential. Uh, we need Matt Boyd to be the bounce back guy, uh, and, 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 and pitch to his potential. Um, and, uh, I, I gotta believe that at some point during the season, and I'm not going to predict when, uh, but, uh, Matt Manning might get his chance uh, this year also at the major league level. So that's going to be an exciting thing to watch. Um, and then Joey Wentz, uh, which, you know, I don't want to forget about him. He's making tremendous progress and, and uh, he's already out here throwing to 120 feet. Uh, he'll be working out with the club because he's able to do everything physically. And so, uh, you know, he's making good progress and I'm excited to, to see him make full recovery and, and at some point uh, pitch for us too. That's great. I'll, I'll let everybody else get out of here. I'll thank you for this again. I appreciate it. Thanks, Chris. We'll go next to Evan Petzold from the Detroit Free Press. Al, thanks for uh, thanks for doing this. You know, looking at a couple positions specifically, but you mentioned the six man rotation. Does that almost seem inevitable at this point, just to give you more flexibility? I'm not saying you're you know, going to guarantee to do it, but I mean, does it seem like that's the way that things are are leaning at this point? It, it certainly does. Um, I just don't know uh, how you're going to get through the, all the innings that you need. Um, so now in saying that there'll, there'll be flexibility. Uh, I don't know that we need it right at the beginning of the season. Uh, but certainly, you know, once we get underway and, uh, and we'll make adjustments, uh, AJ, uh, we did, like I said, we just had a staff meeting and, uh, and, and Chris and AJ and, and, and the rest of the staff, we'll be making adjustments uh, along the way as needed. And we'll add guys, uh, as needed and, and, um, you know, it's about making sure that not only do we get through the season, okay, but we want to, you know, we want to get through the season and win some games and get guys better. So it's not just, hey, uh, we want innings and get through the season. There's a lot more to it. For sure. And then at the, at the catcher spot, I mean, obviously going with an offense first catcher and, and Wilson Ramos, I mean, what led you to that decision over, say, like a defensive first catcher such as Alex or somebody else that was out there on the market? I mean, when you're going through those meetings and having those conversations, what were the kind of the pros and cons that you weighed uh, there? Well, that, that's a good question because we really uh, discussed that at length. Um, and it really came down to, you know, Alex or, or Wilson defense or, you know, more offense or more defense and whatnot. Um, and, and really the catching part of it, we were trying to make sure we were covered in other areas and trying to stretch the budget as best we could. Um, and then when we had the opportunity uh, to move forward, and, and, and obviously we needed to move forward because we knew Alex was moving on and, 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 and Ramos also. So we, we, we needed to take action. And at that point, through conversations with our staff, you know, AJ and, and, and my front office, uh, we felt uh, to go more with the offensive side um, just because we, we, we just been so bad offensively behind the plate. Uh, but in saying that, you know, nobody ever thought – 
nobody ever said, hey, this guy is a butcher behind the plate. He's going to be terrible. People, uh, most of our guys felt that he, he'll be uh, uh, he'll be fine behind the plate. He's a good leader, uh, and he's a guy that really gets involved with his pitchers as, as well as the, the rest of the, the staff. So um, we don't see it's going to be a, a problem. And, you know, obviously, you know, Jake Rogers is a good defensive catcher. We do like – we. We like Eric Haas, uh, even though he's, you know, we had to take him off the roster. I, we think that if he, we needed to bring him back up, he, he could do the job. Uh, Griner, you know, obviously needs to improve his game. And so there'll be some challenges there. But, uh, you know, we got a little bit of organizational depth. But, uh, you know, we got Dylan Dingler coming not too far down the road, hopefully, and, and, and Cooper Johnson. So, um, you know, there's going to be some competition. But right now, I think Wilson Ramos. Uh, you know, for this year in the short term is there, what's the right way to go. And in the outfield as well, I just wanted to ask about that really quick. Um, you know, with Grossman and Mazzara and, and Reyes and Jones you have out there, is the plan to keep a, a fifth outfielder? Um, and then also, like, what does that mean for opportunities when it comes to Daz Cameron and Christian Stewart, um, Akil Badu as the, the Rule 5 pick? Um, how does that scenario kind of play out in your head? Yeah, great question. Uh, again, you know, part of our meetings today was going through that too. Uh, you know, with the, the beauty, the beauty, the beautiful thing about Grossman is that he can play left field, center field and right field. So on any given day, um, you know, if we feel more comfortable, let's say with Mazzara, um, uh, depending on the ballpark too, you know, we can, we can make adjustments depending on the ballpark and where we feel that our guys fit better from a defensive perspective. Um, so obviously Grossman will be in the lineup there, uh, uh, you know, probably to start in, in left field, but knowing that he could move to other areas in the outfield, uh, you know, Jacoby Jones will come back and, and he'll be our center fielder. And if he stays healthy and continues to do what, you know, what we, what he was doing before the injury, he should be fine. And then obviously we signed Mazzaro and we have Victor Reyes and, you know, uh, and again, it's all about competition. It's all about performance. And, and so there's no reason why you don't think that they, 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 they both couldn't play um, if, you know, uh, if they were both playing well. So uh, with Akil Badu, well, I'll tell you what, uh, again, he was part of the conversation today. He's a, a really good looking prospect. We got, we had really good reports on him from the past. Um, we even talked to, um, uh, you know, uh, to some, a couple of guys that had managed him. Um, uh, he's a true center fielder, you know, um, and what we're hoping for is that what we see in spring training is enough that, uh, you know, like, kind of like a Victor Reyes where, you know, he can play defense, you know, he can run the base as well and pinch run for somebody. And that can give you a, a competitive at bat, whether it be a, you know, a bunt down the baseline or, or at least make some contact. So, so that he can contribute towards, towards, uh, to the team, towards the team winning a game. Um, you know, whether you can bring him out and, and steal a base uh, late in the game or something like that, then, then, you know, he's got a better chance of sticking. And so that's our hope. Uh, with Stewart, again, he's going to have to come in and, and, and hit. Uh, his tool is the bat. You know, uh, uh, if he can hit, his, his, his feeling will be, will be adequate. And so it's, uh, it's about the bat, and he'll have an opportunity to swing it. So we'll see how that goes. And, uh, you know, with Daz Cameron, um, Daz is uh, obviously an up-and-coming uh, prospect for us. Um, he's been, you know, he was, he was slowed down in Puerto Rico because, of, you know, he hurt his arm a little bit. He's been here rehabbing. He's still not 100%, but he should be 100% by the time pitchers, I mean, uh, the uh, position players are full go. And, um, you know, he, like, like I said, he's going to have to compete for a job. Uh, but he's also a guy that we feel that has a future here. Uh, that has a, a lot of upside potential that uh, is still untapped. So, uh, you know, we, we still feel very good about him. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thanks, Evan. We'll go next to Jason Beck from MLB.com. Yeah, hey, Al, thanks for doing this. Um, you guys had a, had a flurry of signings there late the last few weeks. Did this market play out the way you guys expected? And, and how did you guys prepare for this as a front office when you went into the offseason? Well, you know, every year when we when we go into the off season, um, we we evaluate our, the players that we have on our roster, uh, and we see how they all fit in. And 
whether we're going to tender guys contracts or non-tender things of that nature. So, you know, we, we see what we have as a, as a nucleus and we see what we have coming up as potential guys to make the club. And then, okay, so where do we have to go out and, and make some moves? Um, so then, you know, we'll go and we will we'll evaluate the other 29 clubs and uh, what, you know, through conversations that we'll all have with our counterparts and other clubs, uh, you know, what their needs may be, who they might be looking to move and things of that nature. So we'll have a list, uh, kind of a prep list of, of players from other teams that, that we might uh, have, the, well, have the potential to acquire either through trade or, you know, we guys that we think they might be non-tendering guys that they think we think might, you know, go on waivers, whatnot. Uh, and so we'll have a list of that, of p- potential guys to pick up in, out of a list of, uh, out of that list. And then of course, then you have the free agents, you have starting pitchers and you have right-handed relievers, left-handed relievers, catchers, you know, all the way down, all the way through each position. And we rank them. Okay. So we got a tremendous analytical department that can put together our, our scouts information, our, our, our analyst uh, information, and put it all together and we'll have a prep list um, not too different than actually pretty pretty similar to how we do the draft and, and put the board up except that in this case you know if you're looking for starting pitching well we got pitching you know one through you know 200 or however how many free agents are going to be out there so we do that for every position uh, obviously you know the the number one guy Bauer is not the type of guy you know we weren't going to go after him but you know he's up there not high on the list so, um, and that's how, how kind of we worked it out. And so uh, you may have, may not have heard our name out there a lot uh, on some rumored trade or free agent guys, but quite frankly, we had a wide net. We did talk to a lot of agents in several clubs. And so while you might have not heard the, do- the Tigers involved here, we actually were involved in a lot of different areas with a lot of different players. Uh, we just don't, we just, I mean, we kind of, practice not really to, to throw it out there uh, for any, any just any purpose. So, but, um, you know, we ended up signing the guys that we felt uh, can help the club uh, that fit within, you know, uh, our parameters. As you got further into the off season and got a better idea of what 2021 is going to look like in terms of fans and in terms of money coming in, did that affect your budget and in, in, in turn your off season plan as far as what you could afford? Yeah, yeah. And well, I, I can't talk for every club because obviously there are some clubs out there spending quite a lot of money. So uh, there's a, obviously a handful of clubs out there still uh, doing that, which quite frankly, you know, some of those clubs in the position that they were in, uh, you would you would think that uh, that's what they, they should do at this point. But uh, in our situation, just like any club uh, coming from the situation from last year where you had no fans in the stadium, you played 60 games. Obviously, that's a tremendous burden on any club, not just the Tigers. So that obviously, would, you know, uh, uh, affects the whole the whole planning stage. And then going into the unknown. Um, so we do we are planning to have, uh, uh, I believe, it's 2,000 fans here um, in Lakeland for spring training, which is great. Um, the plan is uh, uh, we uh, we speak to we're making plans in uh, different areas of the stadium, and it's going to work out great. Uh, so the fans will really be able to enjoy it. And let me just tell you, the, the interest to come back to the game, uh, it, it's tremendous. And, and there's a, I mean, we could probably, we could probably sell out the stadium if, if we could. Um, but, um, but the tickets that we're allowed to sell, we're selling them well. Uh, and then going into the season, again, you know, we'll have fans in the stadium, but it'll, it'll be restricted. Uh, and hopefully as things move along into the summer, it'll, it'll get loosened up and we'll be able to add more fans. So, but again, how many, how quickly it's, it's an unknown. If we were, if we would know, uh, you know, a little bit ahead of time, I think it'll be, it would make it easier because then you can plan, you know, uh, for, Hey, this is the, the projected revenue per se, uh, as opposed to right now, it's really unknown, uh, moving forward. But I do, I am optimistic that, Things will get better. We'll get more fans in, and um, it, it'll be a lot better as we move along. And, and we just have to be very safe. Um, you know, number one priority: safety of the fans, safety of the players. Um, and as we move forward, and once you know we establish that 
if everybody's safe and, and things are getting better, then, uh, then, then, then things can get more optimistic and more and open things up a little bit more. Just to follow up, have you guys talked with state and local officials about the possibility of fans in the seats at Comerica Park for, uh, for this coming season yet? Well, our business guys, and who is led by Chris Granger, it, you know, takes that responsibility as far as uh, speaking with, you know, state officials, city officials, and things of that nature. So that would be more appropriate question for him. But yes, um, you know, obviously, uh, you know, as an organization, um, we're, we are uh, on top of, uh, you know, everything that, that needs to, that we need to know um, as far as uh, proper protocols, uh, what's going to be allowed, not allowed. MLB has done a tremendous job leading the way also in this manner. So um, obviously they, they're doing it from a, a national level and each club uh, is doing it from a local level. And, um, you know, again, trying to make sure that we do things in the right manner to make sure that the fans are safe, the players are safe and uh, as we move forward. And uh, lastly, just to clarify, when you were talking about Wentz earlier, hopefully being able to pitch this season, could he pitch for you guys in Detroit this summer? I, you know, it's a little bit too early to say. Uh, I'm just excited that he's making great progress. He has not, he has not had any uh, setbacks. Uh, he looks good, feels good. Uh, the trainers are really pumped uh, on his progress. So I'm just optimistic that, or should I say not, I shouldn't say optimistic. I'm just happy of his progress. So, but I really can't predict and won't predict <laughs> Well, he'll be pitching for us. I'm just excited that uh, he, he's making good progress and, um, you know, I'm hoping for the best there. Great. Thank you. You got it. Thanks, Jason. Uh, Matt Shepard, Fox Sports Detroit. Al, good to see you. Thanks for doing this. Uh, how do you weigh what's best for Jake Rogers, a backup at the major league level or a full-time guy at AAA? That's a great question. And um, that'll be, I'm sure, depending on, on what we see in spring training, um, that'll be a question that we will probably meet on, uh, you know, a few times throughout the spring uh, on what to do there. So I think a lot of it has to do how uh, his progression goes here to in spring training and as we move forward. Um, and that'll be a, a, a conversation that we'll have, conversations that we'll have or discussions that we'll have throughout the spring uh, and possibly, you know, even after the season starts. So um, probably even after the season starts. So that, that um, right now is still a work in progress. Uh, lastly, for me, I wanted to get your thoughts on, on just the overall view of the division. Chicago goes out and gets Lynn and, and Eaton, Benintendi in Santana in Kansas City, Rosario, Hernandez back in Cleveland. Um, how do you, how do you kind of handicap and look at the division? It's, it's uh, much more challenging, I think, than people give it credit for. I think we have one of the toughest divisions in all of baseball, to tell you the truth. I can't believe that they don't – I mean, the Chicago White Sox, is a, it's a true powerhouse. Um, and the uh, Minnesota Twins are not too far behind. And then you look at Cleveland and, 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 and Kansas City, people put them there, you know, below all those teams. But – uh, Kansas City has a really good young and up-and-coming team, and they can be very tough. Um, it, you know, once that pitching starts to settle in, uh, they're going to be as tough as anybody in the division. So uh, I do believe we have, uh, if I mean, I'm not going to say the toughest because it's going to be, you know, that's, <laughs> that's uh, you know, you can argue that uh, as much as you want. But for me, it's probably the toughest uh, division when you look at team by team, and I don't think some of these teams get enough credit but um, it's definitely one of the toughest, if not the toughest division in all of baseball. And one more for me. Um, regarding your staff, the, the guys you brought in, AJ and, and his staff now, what has impressed you, maybe surprised you most about how they've gone about their craft so far since you've gotten to know them? And thanks for doing this. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what. I, again, today we had, this, we, we had our staff meeting, uh, my first staff meeting with them. And I was so excited and so happy just because, you know, normally um, we would have gone over, I mean, we went over a lot of the players, most of the players actually that uh, that's going to be in, are going to be in camp. And in the, in the in the past, we've had video and this and that. And uh, because of the pandemic and, and, and social distancing, we couldn't hold our meeting in our normal meeting room here. As big as it is and as big as we build it, it's... <laughs> For, uh, it's, uh, we didn't build it for a pandemic. So uh, we're, we're, 
you know, where they call for social distancing. So we had to meet uh, in a different area in the in the uh, the building here, uh, where it's what's bigger, more and more spacious. Uh, and so we didn't have the opportunity to put video up uh, in that in that particular area. But the reason I'm, I'm telling you this story is because uh, we didn't need to because all these guys, the pitching coaches, the hitting coaches, the infield, the outfield, they've already been watching video. They've seen video. They've already talked to players. They've, they've, they've done the analytical work. They've done the video work. They've already talked to players. They already know. They've already got players on programs. Uh, a m- you know, months before we got here, um, I got an email from Chris Fetter. Uh, he had a pitching plan already set for every pitcher uh, that we have, uh, that we have coming. And so I, I already had taken a look at that, you know, months before even coming here to spring training. Um, that guy has put in so much work already, um, uh, which is, an, uh, it amazed me. I had, you know, first time I ever seen that. Uh, and the same thing with our hitter. I mean, uh, uh, Scott Coolball has already worked with, uh, with Jake Rogers. Of course, it, it's good that they don't live too far, you know, from each other. So he's already, he's already been with them, uh, one-on-one, um, not to mention, you know, uh, checking video and information on all the other guys. So, a lot of the legwork had already been done before this meeting. So it wasn't necessary to go through all this video and stuff. It was more just a background uh, on every player and kind of expectations and, and things of that nature. So um, the amount of work that the, this entire staff has already put in before coming in here uh, has been tremendous. And uh, it just, I came in with a big smile on my face, like, you know, we're already ahead of, uh, of the game when it comes to spring training. Thanks, Shep. Uh, we'll go next to Cody Stavenhagen from The Athletic. Yeah, well, how did you guys end up with Renato Nunez and how might he factor into whatever you're thinking at first base? Well, you know, that was David Chad. Uh, David was on that one for a long time. Um, and and he's, he's the one that kept on pounding, like, okay, I, we got to sign this guy. And, you know, I can't, can't go, go try to sign, you know? <laughs> But, you know, obviously it's hard when you're not, you know, when a guy's expecting a major league contract and you're not offering one. So um, he worked on it all winter. Um, and I got to give him the credit. Uh, he really, really uh, worked on it. And that's how we got him. And, and the truth of the matter is, um, you know, he's got real power. I mean, he's, he's a real power hitter and uh, he's a young man. You know, this guy. <laughs> This guy, I mean, he could be considered just like any other young guys that we have that could be part of the, you know, the future. That's how young he is. Um, and he's already put up big power numbers. Now, yeah, his defense could be obviously not uh, not the best at first base. He's more of a DH. But obviously we'll work with him uh, at first base on his defense. Um, he'll be here in, in, in spring training. And um, he'll have an opportunity to, to make the club. And so – and so that's what, it'll be interesting how the whole thing you know shakes out in the infield and, and who ends up where. At the very least, if he does not make the club, you know you have a good power hitting guy there, um, you know um, that you can bring up. But uh, but he'll have an opportunity. And just like I said, we're looking for offensive punch, and and you know uh, I think he came to the right place for a good opportunity. For sure. I mean, I guess is, is the hope that he can be your everyday first baseman or are you guys still looking at Jamer or someone else there or do, or do you know at this point? Well, you know, right now we're, um, we're a team that we're, I mean, and again, coming out of this meeting, we, we have a lot of questions to answer. Um, and so we just wanted to add enough pieces uh, to the puzzle uh, or should I say players to the, to the roster that at the end, um, you know, uh, we can find a place for everybody uh, and make the team better. So, you know, the most ideal thing would be for a team to say, okay, here's my third baseman. He's been put, he's been with me for three years. He's an all-star by shorts. And then you have players that this is their position. You know, they're going to be penciled in in that position every single day. Well, we don't have that luxury right now because we're, we're still a team that's trying to build to that point. Okay. So, you know, he could be part of that infield as, as well as Candelario, as well as Willie Castro, Isaac Paredes, uh, you know, and, and, and Nico Goodwin for that matter. And then you get more guys that, you know, eventually will be added to the mix. Um, and so, um, you know, 
bringing in a guy like Scope, obviously he's a guy that can help us kind of settle in a little bit better, you know, where you feel you, you get a little bit uh, better leadership there. Um, and, you know, and, and, hey, Nunez has been around too himself a little bit, so it's not like he's a rookie, uh, although he's young enough to be a rookie. And um, so it's unsettled yet, but uh, by, the, by I promise you, by the end of spring training, uh, the staff and us will have it figured out. All right, sounds good. Thank you, Al. Thanks, Cody. We'll go next to Mike Stone from 97 won the ticket. Hi, Al. Um, you, may, you touched on some of the guys, but do you think in today's game uh, you guys have enough power hitters or enough long ball threats to uh, have a really good offensive season this year? Well, you know, that's that's why, like I said, that's why we added uh, Wilson Ramos. Uh, he brings that behind the plate. We haven't had it behind the plate. Um, and he, you know, basically a legitimate uh, hitter. Uh, uh, and that's what we brought him in. Um uh, Robbie Grossman, while he, he has not been a, a per se power hitter in his career, um, the last couple of years, in particular last year, uh, he has made some adjustments. We talked about those adjustments today, about how he's using his lower half. And there's a lot of adjustments that he made to increase the power. Uh, and we do feel that that will continue as we as we move along. So um, uh, so we feel that we feel good that, that he can bring some power uh, although that's not hit, that, that has been his full history. Um, of course, Mazzara, um, you know, he's hit you know, when he was a young man for four years in a row, 20 home runs. And so at 26 years old, uh, he's a big, strong guy. There's no reason why we, we as an organization, our coaching staff can't figure how to get him back on track uh, and hit 20, 25 home runs. So that's why we brought him in for that power potential. Uh, Jonathan Scope has got tremendous power. We saw some of it last year. Uh, and that one of the reasons we brought him back was, yeah, he's a good defensive player, but he's also a good offensive player. So that combination of guys, those veteran guys uh, that we brought in, um, you know, will play a role and hopefully a better offensive output uh, from the club. Now in saying that, you know, we need our young guys to, to continue to step up. Candelario looked like he was on the right track and we need him to continue that. He's got, he's got uh, you know, some power and, 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 and good hitting ability. Willie Castro, we feel, can be a good hitter. And so uh, Isaac Paredes uh, uh, has had, uh, you know, you can't have a better a guy with better numbers in the minor leagues than Isaac Paredes, and, and of course, this winter. So he's got the, the offensive potential. Uh, Jacoby Jones, uh, when he's healthy and, and, he, and he can play uh, consecutive games, you see the potential he can bring to the table. Um, and so that mix of some of the guys that we brought in with some of these young guys, we feel we have, a, we will have a better offensive team for sure going into 21. So final, final thing. Uh, one guy you didn't mention. And not, not to mention, you know, down the road when, uh, when the Torkel such the green gets here, I hope that then of course that takes us over the top. Right. I want to ask you about the one guy you didn't mention and his name was mentioned a little bit. I don't know how serious about playing first base and, is Miguel Cabrera. What do you think realistically the expectations should be for him? Last year, I know spring training before it shut down, he was really, really good. And then we know what happened since then. What, what's, re what's realistic for Miggy? Well, one thing I do know is that Cabrera, if you guys remember last year, he worked harder than ever. He, he Physically, he looked better and felt better than ever. All right. That has not changed. It's been the same this year. Uh, as a matter of fact, when we were uh, looking into signing Wilson Ramos, um, you know, he had been working out with Cabrera the last couple of years at, in the same facility. If you see Wilson Ramos, he's a beast. I mean, he's so strong. So Cabrera's kept that up, uh, has not let down at all. As If anything, he's probably uh, intensified the, the workout routine. And uh, he's even sent uh, AJ and myself video uh, of not just, not, not just his workouts, but fielding ground balls and throwing and, and moving around. Uh, uh, bouncing around really uh, to show us uh, that he's uh, that he can still play first base um, to some degree if we wanted to. And uh, of course he, he would like to play a little bit more first. So, um, you know, and talking to AJ and, and AJ has talked to Cabrera. Uh, I, I think he's open-minded to give him some innings at, at first base. So from a health perspective, he's really worked hard and hopefully he does stay healthy. And, uh, and if he does, he does have, uh, you know, the potential to continue to be an offensive productive, a productive player. Last year in spring training, just like you mentioned, 
he looked really good. And, and he, he got to a good start. And then, of course, the shutdown came. And like a lot of players, when he came back, you know, uh, he was slowed down. I mean, it, he, uh, you know, that's when I, I think, if I remember correctly, Casey Vines was blowing fastballs by him. And, um, and, and it was like, okay, it's not so much – it's spring training, and the Braves just had a few months off, and now he has had no live BP. Okay, so this is where we're at. So he had a rough start, like some a lot of players did. Well, if, if you recall, though, the last month of the season, he really turned it on, he started hitting the, and he started hitting up a storm the last uh, month of the season. So um, as, as he got into the group, uh, and so – I don't expect anything different. I expect him to come into spring training uh, 100% ready to go, and hopefully he's got a good start and uh, can th- see it through the whole entire season. Thanks, Al. Thanks, Tony. Uh, we'll go next to Bob Wojnowski from the Detroit News. Hey there, Al. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Um, you mentioned Torkelson and Green, and of course everybody wants to talk about the young guys and when the young guys will be here. Um, d- Obviously, it's getting closer as the years go on. Are you approaching that fine line between putting some young guys out there or still holding back and making absolutely sure that they've earned the spot? How do you how do you weigh those two different uh, scenarios? Well, that's why you see us bringing in, you know, guys, bringing back a guy like Scope and signing guys like Robbie Grossman for two years. Um because we, we, we're going to make these guys earn it at the major league level. Now, in saying that, you got to be careful because just because you bring a guy up and he struggles doesn't mean all of a sudden, you know, you're, you're, you're going to get rid of him or you're going to send him back. You got to give him an opportunity to, to, to work through it. So there is a fine line, as you say, uh, earning it and, 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 not, and making sure that you don't cut off the cord too soon also. So, um, you know, with Green and Torkelson, uh, you know, Torkelson hasn't even played a game in the minor leagues yet, and, and Green's only got a season in. So um, what we're hoping there is that uh, we're right in the, in, the, in the fact that we feel that they're advanced, uh, more so than the average, uh, you know, player, hitter, per se, and maybe they move a little bit quicker. But that doesn't mean we're going to push them uh, where we feel they're going to fail. Uh, we got to make sure that, when we do push them to the next level, we feel that they're going to have uh, success. Uh, again, that doesn't mean that the minute, the minute you move a guy up, he's going to have instant success. You're, you're going to have some struggle. Um, you know, Riley Green, when we sent him to full season A ball last year, it wasn't like all of a sudden he kept on, you know, uh, rip, ripping the ball off the, the cover off the ball. But uh, it did it did, did good did him good for his experience, and he did actually very well in the sense that. Um, you know, for a very young high school player, he handled it very well. And those are the kind of things that you want to see also, uh, you know, in between. So, like you said, it's a fine line. Um, and, you know, we got to be careful on how, uh, how we move these players up. Now, the player development is a very sensitive uh, – uh, it's, it's a very sensitive process. Uh, and everybody's different. You get it, and you get to treat everybody differently. Uh, it, it can't all be the same. Just a quick follow-up. Do you feel like this is perhaps, hopefully, the last transition year between young guys and veterans, and by next year it will be full-fledged, not, I don't know, full-fledged, but a lot more of the young guys? Is this sort of how you're viewing, hoping the progress is? Well, the way I do it is as our young guys become better uh, and more established, um, you know, we're always going to be an organization that are going, that's going to always try to, uh, promote and, and, and develop your, our own guys and give guys opportunities. So we're always going to have that. We're, we're, we're going to be a team, an organization that, uh, is going to be producing young players all the time. Uh, but at the same time, we also know we have to, uh, you know, bring in players from outside, uh, also from time to time. So, uh, our goal is to get more young players established at the major league level and surround them with, uh, you know, guys that we feel will, will take us over the top and, and, and help us win more games. So next year, uh, you're talking about the off season, the you know, winter of 22 or 21 going into 22. Um, we, yeah, I, I think at that point we can add more to the organization and, and make it better for 22. Uh, so again, it's a mix of, bringing in guys and the young guys, uh, 
you know, getting more established and, and, and that combination of players. Thanks, Thank Willie Joe. Time for just a couple more. We'll go next to Jeff Seidel from the Detroit Free Press. Hey, thank you. <clears throat> um, all managers are different, um, but AJ comes in with a, a different kind of skill set. Or a, he has four years of experience as a VP of scouting. And I wondered if you've seen how he approaches stuff or those skills, if you've seen that play out and how you've built this team or how he's contributed. Well, AJ has uh, a, really a diverse uh, uh, experience, um, uh, which is a, which is a good quality to have as a manager. Um, and and one of the things um, is evaluating the, his talent. Okay, so but there's also a huge support group because any anybody that any scouting director that have, has had success will tell you he's only as good as the scouts around. Him. Um, you know, as an organization, you're only as good as the analysts around. So, um, well, for me, it's a tremendous advantage to have a manager that's been a scouting director that's, that, that knows what scouting is all about um, because it, it helps the evaluation process. And he also knows what the evaluation process is and, and how you can make mistakes and how you can, you know, hit a home run. Um, so, uh, that's the beauty of it. You know, it's, um, you know, it, it, the world of amateur scouting is so different than that. And, you know, it, I would say amateur eva evaluation of amateur talent is a world of difference than evaluating professional talent. Um, but, uh, in saying that it's a great training uh, ground because it's so much more difficult, you know, <laughs> but, um, for me, in the front office, is a tremendous advantage to have a guy that's done it before, for sure. If I could just follow up a little bit on Chris Fetter, what else? It sounds like he's incredibly um, <laughs> dedicated, works his butt off. Um, anything else that you've seen that has really impressed you about him? Well, everything I've seen has impressed me about him. It's, I mean, there's nothing. Uh, it's, it's, it's really off the charts. I've been on some Zoom meetings with him. And our coaching staff and our minor league uh, pitching coaches, um, and he's very thorough, uh, very detailed oriented. The uh, understands the analytics and the numbers. Um, I, I mean, uh, I mean, as best as I, I could ever imagine anybody doing it. And I, you know, and that's not my area of expertise by any means. So anything I tell you good about that, you know, you can take with a grain of salt. But. Uh, I have been in, in enough meetings and I've read enough and I've got enough smart people around me to know when a guy knows what he's talking about and, and the impact that he's already made and the experience that he's had in the past uh, have all come together. So right now I know we're well advanced um, going into spring training of more advanced and, and more prepared than we've ever have been. Um, and so I, I'm very confident of that. And, and, and like I said, coming out of this meeting today, you know, I walked in there with a big smile on my face because I know all the work that they've, they've already put into it before we even showed up here. Well, thank you. Thanks, Jeff, uh, we'll take two more. We'll go first to Noah and then we'll wrap it up with Lynn Henning. So Noah, go ahead. Yeah, um, the restructuring of the minor leagues throughout baseball was announced a few days ago. I'm curious what you think the impact of that is going to be. And just in general, are you just in terms of player development, are you excited to have some semblance of a, a minor league uh, season this year, uh, as opposed to just the alternate training site that you had last year. Yeah. Well, obviously for us and for really for, for any team, the minor leagues is your feeding ground. I mean, if you don't have minor league, the minor leagues and you're not, and you're not producing players, you're not going to be around, um, very long. Um, so it, it's essential and, and major league baseball understood that um, and uh, that's why, you know, we're doing everything in our power as long as everything is safe and, uh, you know, safety comes first all the time, but we're doing everything in our power to make sure that the minor leagues are functioning, um, uh, this year. It's, 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 it's essential to the industry, but for us, really the main, the biggest difference for us is going to be not having the New York Penn league team in Connecticut. Um, um, so, you know, where do you send players uh, that are drafted or, uh, or young players that, uh, that are, you know, 
here in the in the rookie air rookie league like the Gulf Coast uh, camp league the, the camp league now. Um, well, you know we started drafting uh, we started drafting college guys and, and pushing guys to, to to play full season A ball. Uh, so it'll be a mix of the camp the two camp teams that we'll have here in Lakeland. Um, it'll you know Lakeland. Uh, the Lakeland Tigers will be a uh, the low A ball team now, so you'll see a lot more guys, you know, you know being uh, here in Lakeland before they make they make their next step uh, to West Michigan, which will be the high A. So, really, it, it's not a, a huge difference. Uh, it, it's not a huge concern of mine. Um, you know, uh, having here in Lakeland uh, as a low A team is really a, a big advantage to us because we'll have our two camp teams in the next progression would naturally would be right here in Lakeland. So it's just right across the street per se, or across the fields. Uh, so that's a very, con it's very convenient where you can have players going back and forth. It's actually good for their development. Um, and then the, the next level obviously will be West Michigan where you have a lot of fans and, and the competition will be better. Um, and then it'll be Erie and, and Toledo as we've had um, and, you know, throughout my 20 years that I've been here. So in that sense, it, it won't change much at all. Thanks. Thanks, Noel. And we'll go to Lynn for our last one. Al, how confident are you that you're going to have a full college and prep season to evaluate for July's draft? Well, I mean, our, our scouts are out there right now scouting. Um, they've been scouting tournaments. Uh, so, yeah, they're out there scouting right now. I don't um, foresee any, any issues um, with, uh, with that at all at this point. So you're counting on uh, preps being something uh, close to an intact uh, spring schedule and, and obviously colleges, unless something gets shut down, they're pursuing uh, full speed ahead here, but that's the way you see it then that preps as well as. I don't, I don't see, I don't see any issues at this point. No. Oh, good. What do you think about the draft four months out? How's that for uh, bird dog in here early? <laughs> Well, I've seen a few things written up, and I always laugh. I don't laugh, I guess. I, I, it always puzzles me, though, that people look that far ahead and, and, and start picking guys for us to, to, to take, you know, in the first round in particular. Um, and, it's, and it's always so, so soon, really. Being a scouting director myself uh, and doing it, uh, I always remember, you know, guys that you're looking at the summer before, then during the winter time, and then Jan even in January, okay, you start seeing the Baseball America front page of the you know the college guy. And I remember as a scouting director, you know, get, make my list and all the names and all that stuff that, from the guys that we scouted in the summertime and and all the projections. And by the time the draft gets there, it could be so different, you know. So that's why I don't. Uh, I got, you know, we've got the early reports and we got the early information, but things can change on a dime um, during the college season, whether it be because of injury, whether it be because of poor performance or, or a guy that, and we've talked about this many times, a guy that performed poorly last year, or let's say at the beginning of the season, and then he comes on strong and, and things of that nature. So a lot of things can happen. And so that's why I, I'm, I'm very uh, uh, patient, I would say, and I'm a very impatient guy. I mean, uh, that's why I don't, uh, that's why I've avoided, I mean, I've been in player development, but um, you have to be patient and let it develop before you make any, I mean, I'm not making any predictions by any means. So I can't go ahead and stake it a Kumar Rock or Jack Leiter or Jed Fish. <laughs> I mean, they just keep on coming up, you know. I just read the other day that 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 uh, that Rocker was our guy, you know. <laughs> Surprise to me, but yeah, I can see, you know. But uh, so you no, know, it still has to develop. It's just, yeah. It really is. Truth be told, it really is a little bit too soon to say who. We're yeah. Well, and, and that's that said facetiously, but you don't mind the idea that this draft's going to July versus June. No, no, it's it's. I, we've been talking about that for years. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Al. Thanks, Lynn. Uh, that'll wrap it up. We appreciate everybody joining us. Al, thank you for your time. Um, and obviously with the first workout tomorrow, we'll have an email later tonight with our schedule, Zoom schedule for tomorrow with AJ and players. So um, thanks again, everybody, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, Chad. Thank you. Thank you.
All right, guys, good job.